When I first started working in studios in the early 80s, my mentor used to drum this into my head on a daily basis. Kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. The DBX160 compressor epitomizes this ethos. Hi, welcome to the Crates Motel, my name's Conan. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at the DBX160 compressor. Now, in my mind, there's two types of compressors. There's compressors with bells and whistles, and then there's the DBX160. It's the epitome of simplicity. Let's jump in. So here we are in Studio One. Now, since the 80s, when I first started using the DBX160, I've used it on drums, and that's what I'm gonna demonstrate it on today. That's not to say that you can't use it on other sources, but I only really use it on drums, so I'm gonna demonstrate it on drums. As you can see, it's a very, very simple compressor. There are several different companies that make emulations, and I'm gonna show you the different emulations that I have. I don't really have a favorite. They're all slightly different, and this is not a comparison video. I'm gonna start off with the UAD version just purely because it's the most simple version. It has threshold, compression ratio, output gain. This one does actually have a mix knob on it for parallel compression. That's obviously not something that was included on the original. And most of the companies have their own little extras that they put on there, which you know you have as an advantage having a plug-in in the box. Like I said, I tend to use it on drums, so I'm gonna demonstrate it on drums. What I love about the DBX160, it's not a transparent compressor. It imprints a sound, it imprints a character. It has a real smack to it. It, has a, it gives a real knock to drum sounds. It makes them rounded, girthy, weighty. It's a sound that you're gonna be very, very familiar with if you like music from the 70s and the 80s. It really rounds things off. And I think its popularity was down to the fact that it was so simple. You literally just grabbed two knobs and sculpted how you wanted the sounds to, to come out the other side. So to start with, we're gonna to listen to a loop Just a sample off an old 70s funk record. I did actually have the plugin activated there. So let's just go into bypass first and flick between it just quickly. And you can hear immediately, even with not much gain reduction, it does actually kind of imprint a sound on the, mostly on the snare drums, if you just listen. So you hear how the snare drum suddenly has a lot of smack to it and starts breathing a lot more and it brings up the room sound. That's what I love about this compressor, the way that it brings room sound up, which is why it's great on live drums. So let's just listen again. So concentrate on the way that the snare drum is rounded off and the way that the sound of the room is brought up. Obviously I've sampled this off a record so you can actually hear the vinyl crackle brought up as well. And that's great if you're a lo-fi producer uh, or you're mixing lo-fi records. This compressor is really, really good for lo-fi stuff, especially on sample breaks off vinyl and stuff, because it just brings up all that dirt and grit. So you hear what I mean? Now, I can bring the compression down a little bit just so that it's not quite as in your face. So even subtly, applied just with a minimum amount of gain reduction, you can hear that it still imprints a real character to it. Let's just listen again. Take that down a little bit more. Uh, by the way, obviously you'll notice that I'm having to uh, adjust the, the output gain because there's no gain match on this and I don't want to fool you with louder is better. So do excuse the uh, changes in volume. I'm trying to get it as close as I can. So 
So can you hear what I mean? Now I'm going to really, really push it now. And I've done this on some tracks before, especially with sampled breaks, and it really kind of brings character to it. If you're familiar with Ultramagnetic MCs, if you're really into your hip hop and stuff like that, they did it a lot on their drum beats. Bomb Squad, uh, who work with Public Enemy, they do it a lot on their drum beats as well. And sometimes, you know, you'll know the original sample that they've used, but it almost sounds unrecognizable because they're pushing it into this compressor so much and bringing up the room sound and making the drum beat really, really breathe. So I'm gonna really, really push it. Let's take the compressor up to about five and take the threshold right down. I'm gonna try and match the uh, gain. So let's try out the version from Waves. As you can see, there's a little bit more to this one. You can collapse and open up this part down here. Uh, it's just, you can add some analog noise. It's got a high pass sidechain. I think it's around about 90 Hertz, I think. So you're, the bass is not activating the compressor quite as much. Uh, and you know, you've got duo, mid side, that kind of thing. But you know, it's still a pretty simple compressor. N neither's better than the other. Like I said, this is not a comparison video. I do find that the Waves one is a little bit more reactive, it's a bit more pumpy, a bit more smacky. Um, but you know, like the actual hardware, you know, one DBX160 next to another DBX160 in hardware would be slightly different because it'd be wired slightly differently or, you know, it'd be slightly older. And that's one of the advantages of having emulations from multiple companies. They're coded slightly different. They might be modeled on a slightly different piece of hardware, so they're gonna sound slightly different. And the like I said, the Waves one has a bit more smack to it, and you're here now. I'm going to demonstrate it on a LM1 drum machine beat, real kind of 80s drum sound. Now, again, there's no automatic gain match on here, so I'll be doing it live. But listen, it is a bit more smacky than the the other the UAD version, basically. For me, it immediately makes drum machines that can sound a little bit clinical and a bit boring, it immediately injects character into them. So 909s, not so much 808s. Uh, snare drums, yes, not kick drums and 808s. It's, it's, it's not great on those, I have to admit. But yeah, 909s, 606 snare drums, 808s, the LM1, the DMX, that kind of thing. Those real 80s drum machines that sounded a bit boring. And that's why they added a lot of reverb and a lot of compression and stuff to them in the 80s, just to give them a bit of life. And this compressor really adds life, especially to the LM1. It just adds a bit of smack. Obviously, I'm overdoing it here because I want to show you the effect that it has. What you could do is push it a little bit further and then using the mix knob, just dial it back a little bit so it's parallel compression. So you've got that kind of pumpy smack added to the drum sounds and then just dial it back so you've brought the dry signal in just a little bit. Sorry, it's really difficult to match the gain, but I think you can get the impression you're not gonna be fooled. You can hear it's not a subtle compressor. If you push it you know, with a compression any higher than about three, it really imprints a real smack to the sound.
So let's demonstrate on a 909 drum beat this version of the DBX160, and it's from a company called Analog Obsession. Now it's free. Analog Obsession makes some amazing plugins. They're all free. I love his stuff. He's recently released this a couple of months ago, I think it was, or maybe it was longer, but I missed it. And it's, it's a good emulation of the DBX160. It doesn't have as many bells and whistles as the Waves version does, or the Archeria one, which I'll show you later, but it has that 160 sound. And like I said, it's free. So if you want to get that 160 sound, you don't want to spend any money, go to Analog Obsession. By all means, chuck him some money on PayPal or whatever. You know, he, he's not paying me to say this, but this guy deserves some props and some juice because he does make good plugins. And this is a good DBX 160. And it's a good introduction to the 160 sound if you don't want to spend any money. So it's quite similar to the UAD version, I think. And I'll, I'm going to show it on a 909 drum beat. What's nice about the high pass sidechain here as well, so you can bring it up so it's not affected by the kick drum so much, it's just compressing the hats and the snare, or the clap in this case. See, that to me just makes a boring 909 house drum beat have a bit of life and a bit of groove. And just literally with this really, really simple compressor, try out this Analog Obsession version if you want to get into the 160, like I said. So this is the Native Instruments version. For me, it's the least subtle out of all the different companies, but it still has its uses. You just have to kind of dial it back with the parallel compression a little bit, I think, with this one. But it's still a decent version, a little bit more to it than the Analog Obsession version, the UAD version. But again, decent emulation and a pretty decent price, I seem to remember as well. This one really smacks on the snare drum and it's really bringing the room sound up as well. See, look, it doesn't seem to be that much gain reduction, but it's the least subtle, I think. There you go, again, a decent version of the 160. So finally, we're gonna look at the Archeria version. Now, this is not actually a 160 as such. It's based on an updated version called the 165. Still a VCA, it was based on the 160. It had a few improvements to it, but it was basically the same kind of thing. As you can see, the Archeria version does have loads more bells and whistles, loads more to it. But again, I for the 160, if I want, if I want a compressor that has loads of things to it, I don't tend to reach for the 160. So I don't really use this stuff down here very often, to be honest with you. I tend to keep that closed. And again, I just concentrate on the compression ratio and the threshold. With this version, you do have some attack and release controls. Again, you can parallel compress as well. But it's a nice version of it. I like the Archeria version. In fact, I like all the Archeria compressors. And uh, it, it's... It's a bit more subtle, it's a bit more like the UAD version, it's not as in your face, it's really, really good on loops. So actually this is probably my favoured one on loops if I don't use the UAD version.
So again, you can hear that real smack sound to it. And it's, you know, like I said, it's not transparent. It's real character. If I was to pick one that was relatively transparent, it would probably be the Arturia one. It doesn't really have so much of a sound to it. It's a bit more clinical to me. So if you wanted to kind of get that smacky 160 sound, the emulation of the 165, which Arturia do, is probably the best one to use if you don't really want grit and dirt added to it. If you want real grit and dirt, I would go with the Waves one, possibly the Native Instruments one. Let's just have a listen to this one again. I'm going to push it a bit further. nice to have the attack and release on a 160 or 165 in this case but like i said if i want a compressor with attack and release on it i don't really look at the 160 i don't really even think about it but it is handy to have it with this style of compressor definitely so it's kind of almost more like an sslg bus compressor this version the 165 from arturia So there you have it, the DBX160. Now, as you can see from the demonstration, it's a real character compressor. It's not a transparent compressor, not something that I use in mastering, definitely something I reach for when I'm mixing, especially hip hop, EDM. If I wanna imprint a real character to the drum bus or on snares, it's really good on snare drums. It just adds weight and girth and it adds character and it, it makes boring drum beats have a bit of life to them. And you know, you can use that as much or as little as you like with parallel compression. Jump on the analog in, the analog obsession version. As I said, it's free. It's a good version of the DBX160 and it will give you a good introduction if you've never used a DBX160 plugin before. I don't have a favorite. I probably use the UAD version the most, but I'm not saying it's my favorite. I do use the Waves one as well. The Archeria 165 is very, very good. And the Native Instruments version is really good as well. Probably a little bit too much character for me, the Native Instruments one, but it's it's still decent. So, so there you have it. You know, I mean, I, it, it really is a real character compressor and it holds a real warm place in my heart. It's one of the pieces of hardware that I miss. And if I did ever go hardware again for some crazy reason, I would definitely invest in a 160. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more mixing and mastering tutorials and reviews. This is the Crates Motel. My name's Conan. Till next time.